Please be seated, ladies and gentlemen. We are expecting Madam's arrival shortly. Few moments more, ladies and gentlemen.
Please be seated, ladies and gentlemen. Our chief guest may arrive any moment. Let us be in readiness, ladies and gentlemen. Our chief guest may arrive shortly.
Thank you for being seated, ladies and gentlemen. Few moments more. Indian Banks Association, IBA. A birth is always celebrated with great pomp and pleasure. Birth of an entity is all the more important if the entity has a meaningful travel during its life. IBA's journey so far was just that. IBA has come a long way in this journey, taking its route in 1944 at Bombay when the illustrious and legendary late Shri Pranlal Devkaran Nanji floated the idea of setting up the association which culminated in the formation of Indian Banks Association on 26 September 1946. Looking back after 75 years, starting from a small office space at Devkaran Nanji Banking Company Limited, which later became the Dina Bank, to the present spacious World Trade Center, the credit of whatever IBA is today goes to all our members, regulators, and our dedicated colleagues, not forgetting our former colleagues. We thank and salute all the concerned on this special occasion. Let us be proud of our contribution to the banking industry and renew our pledge to strive to take IBA to new heights. IBA started with 22 privately owned Indian banks headquartered in the then undivided India. Over the last seven and a half decades, its membership has expanded to 244. Currently, it is an association of banks of public sector, private sector, foreign banks, cooperative banks, RRBs, small finance banks, and payment banks. Besides, IBA has associate members who are NBFCs, financial institutions, and other entities in the banking ecosystem. Since 1962, IBA has also been playing the role of key facilitator for settlement of service conditions and wages between mandating banks and their employee unions. On 19th October 1966, the first bipartite settlement was signed between 36 banks and their employee unions. In October 2020, IBA facilitated conclusion of 11th settlement between the 29 mandating banks and the bank unions representing 8 lakh bank employees. After bank nationalization, the government of India increasingly looked at IBA to be a channel for communication with the banks. Adapting to the transformation, IBA facilitated coordination amongst the member banks to further the government goal of social and inclusive banking. In 1993, IBA facilitated the landmark settlement between banks and the employee unions on the computerization in banks, which marked the turning point of technology induction. Information on the performance of the banks is disseminated through the database publications, newsletters, website, and magazine, which is the Indian Banker. For several years, IBA was involved in designing the Framework for Bank Economist Conference, BCON, which later expanded its scope to become Bankers Conference, BANCON. Facilitating banks in LIBOR transition process, 
has been a major initiative of IBA since 2019, in the course of which a number of webinars were organized for sensitizing bankers and corporates. In 1997, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of India's independence, IBA organized first ever international banking conference on the theme, Managing Global Banking, Emerging Perspectives and Lessons for India. Since 2017, IBA is involved in enhanced access and service excellence. PSB Reforms Agenda, EASE, was initiated in PSB Manthan in 2017 by the government. IBA constituted steering committee to guide and monitor this program. By sharing the best practice among PSBs, EASE has enabled technology and data work risk assignment, prudential underwriting, setting up of loan management systems for faster processing and tracking, introduced early warning signals, EWS systems, and specialized monitoring for time-bound action in respect of stress. In 2020, during the initial days of COVID pandemic, IBA issued standard operating procedures for banks for the pre-COVID and post-COVID lockdown periods. In 2021, IBA initiated the formation of National Asset Reconstruction Company Limited, NARCL, and India Debt Resolution Company Limited, IDRCL. NARCL and IDRCL are new institutions with participation of PSBs, private sector banks, and AFI. NARCL will play the role of aggregator of bad loans while IDRCL will manage the assets acquired by NARCL. The governance design is geared to ensure that the structure is fair and a win-win for all stakeholders. Over the years, IBA took the lead role or had initiated groundwork or proposed to set up institutions that are relevant for the financial ecosystem. They are Foreign Exchange Dealers Association of India, or FEDAI, in 1958. Agriculture Finance Corporation, AFC, now known as AFC Limited, in 1968. SIRSAI, a central registry for registration of charges under the provision of Surfing Act in 2004. The banking codes and... Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. India. A chief guest is expected in a few minutes more, three, four minutes more. 2007, Cordex India Private Limited, which is the credit and operational risk data exchange in 2010, now metamorphosized into PSB Alliance in 2021. IBA expanded its horizon and participated in important global events like CYBOS, took delegations to IMF, World Bank and ADB annual meetings. IBA is a member of Asia-Pacific Rural and Agricultural Credit Organizations, APRACA, and International Banking Federations, IBFED. We have signed MOUs with several banks association. For all these endeavors, we received cooperation from the members. Dedicated staff of IBA played a key role in shaping IBA's journey. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our chief guest for today, Honorable Minister of Finance and Corporate Affairs, Srimati Nirmala Sitaramanji. Let's welcome her with a huge round of applause, please. Welcome, ma'am. You may join us on the dais, please. I request Chairman SBI, Chairman IBA, and Chief Executive IBA to join us on the dais, please. We also have 
our guest of honor shri karar ji on the dais and secretary department of financial services on the dais ladies and gentlemen i extend a hearty welcome to you all on the 75th annual general meeting of the indian banks association we now move on to the lighting of the traditional lamp may i now request shri ak goel chairman iba to lead the honorable minister of finance and corporate affairs honorable minister of state for finance and secretary dfs for lighting of the lamp i also request the other dignitaries on the dais to join them please after the auspicious beginning may i now request shri ak goel chairman iba to deliver his welcome address and give an overview of the activities of indian banks association during the year over to you chairman sir sir careful now thank you very much very good evening to all honorable minister of finance and corporate affairs shrimati nirmala sitaraman ji honorable minister of state for finance shri bhagwat ke karar ji secretary dfs shri sanjay malhotra ji deputy chairman of the iba shri dinesh khara ji shri prabhakar ji shri rakesh sharma ji and honorable secretary iba shri madam mayor ji and chief executive iba sri sunil mehta ji distinguished members of the banking fraternity ladies and gentlemen it is really my pleasure to welcome you all this annual event of the association this is the 75th annual general meeting of the iba and hence it is a special one for all of us on this occasion we are delighted to have honorable Minister of Finance and Corporate Affairs, Shrimati Nimla Sita Raman ji, Honorable Minister of State for Finance, Shri Bhagwat Karar ji, and Secretary DFS Shri Sanjay Malhotra ji, to grace our function. Despite your busy schedule, you are here to share this moment with us. We are indeed grateful to all of you for your kind gesture. i also take this opportunity to extend a very warm welcome to all the guests and the members as i mentioned earlier we are celebrating the 75th agm of the iba incidentally it is also coinciding with the 75th year of the india independence since iba was formed before the india's independence the history of the iba is largely interlinked with several milestone of the indian banking sector it takes us through condition of the indian banks during the partition day to the bank nationalization to computerization in the bank to the financial sector reforms and to the digital transformation that is happening in the indian banking industries i b came a into existence on the 26 september 1946 with 
the meager number of the 22 members with an idea to offer a platform to discuss issue of the common interest of the bankers over the last 75 years of the operation that to working quite closely with the Indian banking sector we have made a mark of ourselves our role has expanded noticeably over the last seven and a half decades and today we have 239 members comprising of the public sector bank private sector bank cooperative bank regional rural bank payment bank small finance bank and the other associates member that are playing a key role in the overall financial ecosystem over the year we have truly emerged as a platform for the collective thinking on almost all the issues of our member i take this opportunity to present before you the highlights of the activity pursued by the iba during the year 2021 22 being the association our activity are largely associated with the need of the our constituents as a natural extension of our role we are engaging with our members on all the related aspects the year saw the culmination of the some of the initiative taken by the association in the financial year 2021 the national asset reconstruction company limited narcl and the indian debt resolution company limited idrcs has become operational secondly known market association in which iba played a key role is also operational now it has developed a marketplace where the institution can buy and sell corporate loan with a level of the standardization which is expected to result in a better price discovery and aid the borrowers to reduce cost over the period of time in the area of the social banking many enablers have been put in the place iba designed a scheme for the overdraft facility for the women self age group members having pmjdy accounts credit guarantee fund trust for the micro and the small enterprises has included the non rural commercial bank as member lending institution of the cgt msme whole trade activity has also been covered under the credit guarantee scheme which was not earlier our member have to deal with the several legal issue during the course of their operation we deliberate on the legal matters also and represent the concern of the bank to the appropriate authorities we also coordinated with the market participants and the rbi in the area of the liver transition an initiative which started in 2019 and saw the peak of our engagement with the stakeholder in financial year 2022 as the season date approached it is heartening to note that the banking industry manages the challenges arising out of the transition without any disruption in the area of the stages manage asset management we have facilitated guidance and the coordinate for the resolution of the stages assets frequent interaction with the member with the insolvency and the bankruptcy code of the india have been facilitated and various suggestions for improvement in the insolvency and the bankruptcy code have been forwarded to ibbi for consideration a model code for the conduct of the coc have been designed and the mou has been entered with the ibbi to facilitate capacity building in the ibc ecosystem we have also facilitated in carving out a road map for identification of the potential stress account to narcl special attention is thus provided for resolution of the stress borrower account in the system the technology and the payment system are another focused area of the iba to celebrate the 75 year of the india's independence azadi ka amrit mahotsav union budget 2022 23 announced the setting of 75 digital banking units in 75 districts with an objective to ensure benefit of the digital banking reach every nook and corner of the country iba is very much involved in this initiative with a view to ensure seamless implementation by our members enhanced assets and the ease excellence ease is another project where iba 
engaged with public sector bank right from the inception. ESR, the launching of the ES4 and award event in the ES3 was also organized by IBA. We have also convened several ES knowledge series for the benefit of public sector bank is next is also launched in this financial year and crazy with the success of the ease the government is adopting the same model in the case of the rrbs iba will be a playing key role in this project also rbi issued the guidelines for the special inr vosto account to increase trade denomination in the rupees we are actively engaged with the market player to facilitate coordination and guidance I am happy to mention that IB has now carved for itself an important space in the financial ecosystem for overall progress of the economy. I take this opportunity to appreciate the relentless effort of the IBA team for engaging in several activities for the benefit of the banking industries under the able leadership of Sri Sunil Mehta, Chief Executive IBA, we received encouragement from our members, regulators and the governments for all our initiative which helped us to perform our role quite well and made us a platform address the concern of the banking industry. Thank you very much. Thank you sir for your address and for elaborating the activities of IBA. May I now request Sri Sanjay Malhotra ji, Secretary, Department of Financial Services, to please address the members. Good evening, everyone. Honorable Minister of Finance and Corporate Affairs, Mrs. Nirmala Sita Ramanji. Honorable Minister of State, uh, Mr. Bhagwat Karaji. Dinesh Karaji, uh, the chairperson of uh, IBA, the CEO of IBA on the dais, and uh, the leading lights of uh, the banking industry over here. First of all, uh, a very uh, big thank you to all of you for giving me this opportunity to be present over here uh, in IBA. Uh, also, congratulations uh, to IBA for completing 75th, 75 years. I mean any institution which is able to thrive and, and maintain its existence over a period of 75 years itself uh, says a lot about the value that it must be bringing uh, to the whole industry. Uh, we in uh, the department and the government, we uh, value this uh, relationship uh, with IBA. IBA has been in uh, the forefront of uh, various activities, whether it is the ECLGS or the EAST program, or now that we are talking about, as the Honorable Minister had wanted us to do, uh, the consumer service uh, ratings of all the banks, including the public and the private sector banks. Uh, we look forward to interacting with you. We, it is our endeavor always uh, to meet with you and all the letters uh, that come to us, we strive uh, to immediately take heed to them and take them forward. Well, uh, uh, I have only, you know, uh, three points uh, here to make. The, ba the banking industry as of uh, today is uh, placed quite comfortably. Of course, uh, the banking industry played a very important uh, role in the COVID and post-COVID in the recovery of the economy. The banking industry now as a whole, uh, whether it is from capital adequacy point of view, CRAR more than 16%, uh, whether it is in terms of uh, the provisioning and the asset quality with GNP is less than 6%, and uh, NNPA only, you know, about 2%. Uh, we are all uh, very comfortably uh, placed. Uh, uh, but at the same time, uh, we need to keep going forward. We need to keep uh, the momentum. Uh, yes, India has now become the fifth largest economy, but we believe that this is only the beginning. Everyone is talking about it. It's not only this decade, but the next century, in fact, 
uh, for uh, India and the banking industry will obviously have to do its job and support the economy and continue the good work that it has been doing. There are good uh, early signs post-COVID, the credit growth has increased and we see that the growth is about 15% uh, uh, per annum and that will certainly be required as we go forward uh, in this era of uh, uh, the, the Indian uh, era or the, uh, the uh, as uh, has been said, you know, that this uh, belongs to India. So uh, the other thing I wanted to also while we concentrate you know, on credit growth, the other thing is that we have to take along all segments. Uh, I, we have noticed that over the years the growth to uh, the credit to the industries has decreased. Of course, partly it is because of the shift uh, of, the, of the credit from the banking to the bond markets. Also the structural shift uh, with services increasing, but I noted that in the last decade it's only about the, the share of the industries has decreased only by 1%, whereas the share of the banks in the credit has decreased from 42% to 26% in the last 10 years. So it is very huge, 16%. We need to take back uh, that space. We need to support this because of the huge multiplier effect that that investments and credit to uh, the industries has on uh, the economy. Similarly, uh, it is also noted that while there are good signs of growth of credit to MSMEs, MSMEs are the growth engine of uh, the country. They provide huge employment opportunities uh, to the people of our country. And uh, this is again an area where we all need to certainly concentrate. While we do concentrate on retail loans where the maximum growth is, my point uh, is with respect to you know, the relative importance being given to uh, the retail loans while that continues, the focus to industrial sector, services sector and the MSME sector is very important. The MSMEs contribute about one third to our economy while their share is only one sixth, about 16, 17 percent is the share. So uh, uh, we have put in place, uh, and this was discussed even in FSTC, uh, very uh, importantly, uh, the account aggregator framework, I am happy that uh, most of the major private sector banks, I mean all the major private sector banks in fact and all the public sector banks are now on boarded account, onto the account aggregator framework. Now it's the turn of uh, the regional rural banks, there are quite a few I am told who are members of this association, I would urge you all to become members of this uh, account aggregator framework both as FIPs and FIUs because this is going to be the way forward. Uh, and this is really uh, going to make available information to you at the click of a button. Not only information related to the banks, we are getting the insurance companies, few of them have already joined, the pension sector, and then the, on the security side, the shares and the mutual funds. Not only financial information, but also information, financial information, which is coming from other sources like GST, income tax, utilities. And so everything, you know, this information and asymmetry, which was there uh, because of this account aggregator to a great extent will be reduced, if not eliminated. So I urge you all to uh, uh, take part in this and contribute in uh, the growth of the country by lending especially to uh, the industries and the MSME sector. Another point that I wish to make here is, the second point that I wish to make here is uh, that while the private sector banks uh, uh, have contributed tremendously now their share in total credit is almost about 37 uh, percent, uh, sorry more than 40 percent now. Uh, but we find that their contribution in some of the other, some of the financial inclusion schemes in the country, the Jandhan accounts, only 3%, uh, 
प्रधानमंत्री जीवन ज्योति बीमा योजना प्रधानमंत्री सुरक्षा बीमा योजना वी फाइंड यू नो द कंट्रीब्यूशन इज ओनली फोर परसेंट अटल पेंशन योजना ओनली सेवन परसेंट के सी सी अगेन यू नो सेवन परसेंट सूपी टेन परसेंट सो वाइल यू हैव आई अंडरस्टैंड दैट मोस्ट ऑफ योर प्रेजेंस इज इन अर्बन एरियाज बट दिस इज द टाइम दैट द रूरल इकोनमी इज ऑल्सो ग्रोइंग and even the public sector banks rur rrbs cooperatives which have been playing a major role in uh, financial inclusion they, uh, they they have gained you know from this financial inclusion because one finds that even in jandhan accounts today it's not you know a zero kind of a balance the balance is about 4000 rupees on an average even in these jandhan accounts and so it uh, helps you in getting access to cheap Uh, casa deposits and similarly you know in the other schemes uh, there are good fees uh, which are there for you uh, to increase uh, your uh, non interest income and so i would urge all the uh, the banks especially private sector banks uh, to also focus you know on the financial inclusion team uh, financial inclusion schemes of uh, the the government Uh, the, the, the last point uh, i wish uh, uh, to make over here uh, is uh, and the honorable finance minister has been stressing this uh, and that is you know on consumer service uh, so all of us need to pay adequate attention to consumer service as i was mentioned as i mentioned earlier we plan to do a survey of uh, and kind of rate benchmark you know the various uh, banks on that uh along with this is going to be important because as the needs of the consumers are also changing uh, they are not looking only you know at banking services they are looking at much more than you know banking services at the click of a button and so we have to all embrace technology and this is true you know not only for the private for the bigger banks for the private and the public sector banks but also at the same time you know uh for uh, the nbfcs for the rrbs and the cooperative banks there is of course you know the government is coming up with a, has come up with a program for computerizing the packs and similarly we are going to assist the rrbs but it's important for all of us to realize that if we do not embrace uh, uh technology then uh, um, uh, we are going to lose out we may even perish so with these words once again thank you very much for this uh, invitation to be with you thank you thank you sir for your address i now invite our guest of honor honorable minister of state for finance shri karar ji to please address the members on the occasion of 75th annual general body meeting of iib the chief guest of today's function honorable minister of finance and corporate affairs shrimati nirmala sitaraman ji madam secretary of dfs shri sanjay ji malhotra iib chairman shri ak goel ji deputy chairman shri dinesh kharaj kharaj ji mr prabhakar श्री राकेश शर्मा जी श्री माधव नायर जी ऑनरेरी सेक्रेटरी एंड चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव श्री सुनील मेहता जी ऑल द ऑफिस बेरर्स एंड मेंबर्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई कंग्रेचुलेट एंड गिव माय बेस्ट विशेष टू ऑल ऑफिस बेरर्स एंड ऑल मेंबर्स ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ सेवेंटी फिफ्थ एनुअल जनरल बॉडी मीटिंग आई एम डिलाइटेड टू बी पार्ट ऑफ दिस मीटिंग and this is a very important occasion i think because we have celebrated 75th azadi ka amrit mahotsav and the, today also we are taking the 75th annual general body meeting meeting iib is one of the major association which brings together the entire banking industry promoting cooperation in a framework of competition this has been a great opportunity to interact with the bankers and understand the state of affairs of the sector the word 
is going through an uncertain and challenging time. Recent geopolitical events in the world have led to a surge in energy and food prices, leading a worldwide inflation, bringing the economic growth to a halt. India too has faced the consequences as any changes in the world directly affects us. Despite this, we can be satisfied with the past year, year's financial growth as we saw a GDP growth is 8.7% in the financial year 2022. The banking sector, which is extremely important for the economy, has played a major role in rebuilding our economic sector. The banking industry that was once under a lot of stress before 2014, 2014 is holding our economy together today. Our government under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji brought in many developments such as consolidations, change in credit cycle, increase in digitalization, regulatory changes like IBC, PCA and discontinuation of or greening of bad loans has given a push to the industry. As a result, financial year 2022, all 12 public sector banks have turned profitable. The scheduled commercial banks have been a credit growth of 9.6% and deposit growth of 8.9% in the financial year 21. The recent as asset quality of scheduled commercial banks has improved where the gross NPA has declined from 7.4% in 2021 to 5.9% in 2022. Net NPA has declined from 2.4% in 2021 to 1.7% 1 in 2022. The banks have increased lending, especially in MSCV sector and agriculture sectors. New schemes such as credit at the rate, click and dial a loan has helped to increase the digital lending with more coverage. I also want to talk, take this opportunity to applaud the banks on their role in in the penetration of government sponsored schemes. Our government is starving to enhance digital payments and digitalization in process. Prime Minister Swanidhi schemes is a huge step taken by the government to provide subsidized short term loans to vendors, men <coughs> be digital, three minutes, emphasis on loan. Banks are assisting the government's efforts in issuing QR code and UPI also. Lastly, I will say that our aim is to give bankers to unbankers, secure to unsecures and funding to unfundings. Lastly, uh, I will say with the under the guidance of Honorable PM, our finance minister, Madam, and all of you, the economy is increased and we are the fifth largest economy, having largest economy. I hope this will continue and uh, will do the best. Thank you. We sincerely thank you, sir, for your message and insights to the bankers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute honor to invite the Chief Guest, the Honorable Minister of Finance and Corporate Affairs, Srimati Nirmala Sitaramanji, to kindly address the audience. Good evening to all the office bearers of uh, the IBA, my colleague Dr. Karad, and also I'm going in the uh, probably wrong order, but um, 
Secretary, Department of uh, Financial Services, and also all the executives of uh, banks who have come here being members of the IBA. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to be with you once again. It's always been uh, a very meaningful uh, interaction when I come for the IBA meets. I know this 75th meeting that you're holding today of the annual general meeting coincide, coincides with India celebrating 75th anniversary post-independence. Um, I've observed this even earlier once, that the IBA's trajectory is very much aligned with India, Free India's uh, trajectory. And as a result, most often, either by default or by the choice of the IBA, you end up serving the nation, keeping yourself aligned with national priorities. And therefore, there's always been a synchronization of banking functions and also government policy. So um, there's uh, enough and more reasons to recollect how that path has helped India move up and grow, particularly in the last 10 years, I would think, in spite of all the challenges that you have faced. Because of various reasons, I'm not going to have to give a political uh, explanation for it. But I'm glad today we are meeting at a time when most of you all have come out of the difficulties that you were put to, you were facing, and as a result today you are able to stand up on your own and be counted for your strengths uh, over the decades. After all, due to extensive uh, networking, spreading of your wings, diligent hard work of your members and of your staff, at all levels, banks in India have grown to the sizes that they have grown today. But even with all that said, and I appreciate particularly the work that was done during the pandemic, I mentioned it in my last meeting, I wouldn't hesitate to repeat uh, here and now again, that participation with a sense of dedication at all levels, in each and every one of the banks, has become, I would think, a golden certificate given by the people because of the dedication with which, at every level, banking, staff, officers, and everybody, in spite of the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, were at the service of the nation. You went to the villages, you uh, delivered on, uh, you know, to the customers who couldn't come to the branches and so on. And some of your staff had also got afflicted by COVID. They couldn't come out of it. And I always have a word of prayer for all of them who lost the earning, breadwinning member of the family who was a member of the IBA as well, in the sense, working in a bank. So, Whenever I meet now, post the pandemic, I have a, a sense of gratitude towards banks in India because you not only worked through the pandemic, but also made sure the amalgamation processes were so undertaken without much of a friction. Uh, banks were merged because we wanted larger, more optimal and efficient banks. All those exercises were also undertaken during the pandemic. So you have gone through a test of the fire, if I can use that word, took up many challenges, amalgamation, COVID pandemic, keeping your staff together, and post that also the demand which the government were giving forward guidance saying, we need more credit in the market, go reach out to the customers, also go to the far-flung areas of the country, you did it all. Today, the economy, is looking up and you also are seeing figures which are coming out. You are clearly seeing the health of the bank which you yourself are reporting. I don't need to re-report to you. The restoration of the health of banks has been so recognized. People are saying today Indian banks are up and healthy and they are at their best. So all this could not have been accomplished but for the diligence with which all of you all have worked and my word of appreciation in this meeting of the 75th Annual General Meeting.
there are several data that I can share with you. I can also say banks have reached this much, NPAs have come down by so much, liquidities spread so much. I'm not getting into that discussion because I'm sure all of you all have been talking about it, reporting about it, writing about it. And the secretary DFS who should actually be keeping an account of it is fully ceased of it. So I'm not going to be getting into that. But what I need to talk to you at this stage, I think, particularly when we are celebrating uh, India's 75th uh, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav and also where the Prime Minister is very clear that for the next 25 years, which he constantly refers to as the Amrit Kal, Amrit Kal has taken off at a very, very positive note. If at this stage, when we are planning for the next 25 years, India has reached the fifth rank in the world from 11th rank that we were in 10 years ago, just the auspicious beginning that we have been waiting. And that auspicious beginning has already arrived. We are talking of an economy which is the fifth largest and having moved to the fifth position within a matter of 10 years, we have so much and more to do. So the Amrit Kal and the banking industry to serve the Amrit Kal is going to have to occupy all our minds. It is for us to see how best we can lift ourselves to meet with the aspirations of a growing India. If from the Red Fort Prime Minister says by 2047 India can be, should be, and we wish to be the developed country that we so deserve to be in. I think the biggest role to contribute in this path and for this path, for us to reach it by that time which all of us hope to be, it is the banking sector which has to make a big contribution. And there's no denying that banks are the biggest catalysts. You are the ones who are going to facilitate businesses to run, agriculture to be comfortably placed, small businesses to be given adequate capital, understanding the nature of requirement of capital by the MSMEs, corporate sector to be supported, but supported with your prudential decisions in, in particular place. Good commercial decisions to be taken by the merit of the matter rather than by anything else. Professionalize your decision making boards. There's no way in which banks can any longer, and I, I understand, I'm saying this even as you've already understood it. There's no way banks can any longer run with a crony kind of a background. The, this government, particularly under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi, has ensured there are no instructions given to the banks. There are no direction about fund him, not fund so and so, is not given at all. You have rec recognized that and we have also appreciated that, that professionalism is what you are all moving towards. And we need to take that at a far faster pace. If for 25 years, especially when India has to grow at that kind of a speed, it is you, the catalyst, who will have to be empowered. And I'm sure the DFS is conscious of that aspect of what we need to do to let the banks be, ask them to carry on with their functions as they should, and engage professional services, professionals who can come and run it in a far more purely banking perspective in mind. So with all that in mind, when we are moving towards greater professionalism, greater independence, greater standing of the Indian banks, which is already proven, I would thank uh, the former Secretary DFS and now also the current Secretary DFS, who actually have gone through quite a difficult phase with me in particular, where I kept saying, no, I'm not giving any more capital to the banks. Let them go to the market, raise funds on their own because they are fine enough in their health. It looked as if I had been very difficult. I like to believe so. I'm sure you still think that I was difficult. But it helped. Haven't you all realized that you went to the market and you could raise resources for yourself? You don't need the government to 
you know, have that approach of my bap, please give me. You've proven yourself. And to add to your strength, monies which were locked up in accounts which were declared fraudulent. The law enforcing agencies are making sure that they give the money back to the bank. The assets have been uh, put on auction, monies have come, and there are times I have called Dinesh Karaji to say, please go ahead, put the bank, uh, put the share out and get the money, put it back into your account. Don't wait for a golden day. This money has come, that which was almost, almost given up, saying we may or may not even get it. Those monies have come. We shall pursue that every bit. No fraudulent account will be left without being taken to the court. We shall get that money back to you. Because you are the custodian of those monies. And fraudsters have no place in this country and banks shall not suffer for the monies which have been taken away by the fraudsters. And that I can say with confidence because in the last few years we've done it. I'm not talking out of the blue. So if that is the kind of support with which we want to work with the banks, both public sector, private sector on a different score, I'd certainly love to see banks now plan for the Amritkar. We're in it already. We should have planned earlier, but never mind. Now is the time. Fifth in ranking economy. Your money is coming back. You on your own have built your health up in such a way that you're able to go to the markets to raise resources. You, you've got the opportunity now to get more professionals into your management. Then what best time to think about what you want to do the next 25 years? In the next 25 years, I would think you will have to have strategies to meet up to the aspirations of the younger population. They shall be about 60% of the total population by the year 2030, youth of India. You will have to make your uh, portfolio such attractive ones that even the young would think there's so much for me in the bank. You will have to articulate it in such a fashion. I'm not saying that you will have diametrically different portfolios. After all, banking has its own prudential sense. But are you making yourself accessible to the youth of this country? Today, women are coming out in very many uh, different ways and doing businesses. Are you communicating with them? Are you offering products for them? So the next 25 years, I've just indicated to you two things, but there could be very many more. So I would like the IBA to take the initiative to plan for the next 25 years as to how you are going to be the most effective capitalist which you have proven during the pandemic. And therefore you have it in you to be able to plan for the next 25 years. What are the areas in which you would want to expand? Not just your brick and mortar. How digitized are you? Is digi digital um, how do I say this? Are you digital savvy? Is your bank digital savvy? Are your staff digital savvy? I don't want to use the word technology. It is technology. But are you all comfortable in being a digital institution? How much of training goes in for this? Now, each of us have created our own empires, maybe. Each of us have our own system, digital system, but that doesn't talk with the next one. After all, all of you are serving this one country, either within the land or outside. Do, do, do your systems talk to each other? Or a customer, for instance, who has an account in A bank, for some reason has to function or do some business with B bank, has to recreate it all. And it will be such a missed opportunity if we are sitting and thinking that I've created my own, I am happy, whereas the fellow who deals with you is the one who feels how many walls are there between banks. So I would think the IBA should plan to make sure 
all systems and all banks, which is private or public, for the purposes of the customer. I'm not asking you to open up the whole arena. For the purposes of the customer, should big systems talk to each other? Now, in a way, account aggregator business has shown us that with the consent of the customer, you are able to provide services and there are no digital encroachment into his privacy. So why is it that we wouldn't be able to do it for other things in the bank? So that is one of the things I would think for the Amritkar, you should be a lot more digital savvy. Also the opportunity that technology gives you over and above having these systems which speak to each other. Your efficiencies, detecting fraud, tracking wrong money going into wrong causes, which is, a, I think, based on the FATF, is a mandatory thing that all of us follow, ministry, banks. Detecting unusual transactions, alerting yourself, alerting the government, Use of Web3, artificial intelligence, data analysis, deep dive into data. All these will have to have some thought processes and some coordination through the IBA, not so much each bank for itself. So use of the Web3, use of artificial intelligence, I would think will be an immediate priority I expect of the banks. Because otherwise, we are all still probably at some level of digital uh, use, but not really as much as to detect fraud, as to have an early warning sign, put in certain kind of um, embedded matters into it so that you are able to get yourself alerted when something goes wrong. So if I'm talking so much about cyber, so much about digi di uh, digital uh, infusion into your banking functioning, the natural corollary would be cyber protection. Are you all geared to have adequate firewalls? Are you all covering yourself enough so that there is no major hacking or a black swan event which leads to a system getting agitated. So ensure that you have enough cyber protection and periodic drills to see that there are no loopholes which you have left without attending to. So you need to have the cert fin people uh, engaged quite often and ensure that they are giving you all the assistance to keep yourself cyber protected. I'll come to something which bothers me in the parliament quite a lot. I think it's important, I'm talking about the public sector banks, but to an extent even the private sector probably will have issues about it. When you have staff in regions who do not talk the local language, when you have at the customer end, at the branch level, staff who don't talk the regional language and who are patriotic enough to say, hey, you don't uh, talk Hindi? No, we are no Indian. And I'm quoting this because I'm probably not putting it into an inverted comma situation, but it has actually happened. I think it doesn't do any good for business. We cannot afford to have staff who don't speak local language and who demand from citizens that they sp speak in a particular language unless, uh, unless they do it, they're not even Indians, need not be your approach. You're there for doing business. You're not there to cultivate certain value system into the citizen except that when it comes to the banking, of course he has to be prompt in paying your interest, he'll have to prompt, promptly service your loans, you, he'll have to deal with you in such a way that he frankly comes and tells you what's his uh, security worth and all that. But other than that, if you are there sitting and saying, hey, I can't understand you, will you go away? You're not there for it. I honestly, at this juncture, tell you, 
please review the kind of people who are getting posted in branch levels. If you have a problem about mixing and matching staff who can speak a local language and you have somebody in that region who can't speak, keep him at the back door. But he shouldn't be dealing with the customers then. I hope we don't create newer problems for ourselves. And therefore, at, I, I've had this discussion with you all earlier, your recruitments will now have to have a lot more sensible ways of recruiting people. If you need X number of people in a particular region, make sure you recruit X plus some more so that that region will require that many number of people who can speak that language. I, I underline the importance of this because of the diversity of this country. And banking sector also is one area in which constantly there are newer people coming in, employment is happening, and if employment and recruitment are happening, it is possible for you to show how inclusivity can be brought in. Inclusivity just doesn't stop with you lending loans to everybody and therefore you are inclusive. Show it in your staff. Show it in the way in which your staff speak to the customers. Or else I can't say what's the difference. What is the difficulty in learning a language? I mean, I'm, I'm from the south, whatever I do, I do try to learn a bit of Hindi, however poor it may be in my delivery, I learn it. As long as my karma Gobi is here, I have to learn the language of that area. And I can't understand how IBA can entertain officers who get posted in non-Hindi areas who don't speak that language. What is wrong in acquiring a language? You are after all serving those customers. If you don't get a person from that area and you post somebody, make sure that that somebody speaks that area's language. He can't just arrogate to himself that if he doesn't, if the customer doesn't understand his language, be done with him. I, I speak in strong words on this because that's the nature of banking. You are dealing with people, you may as well respect them and their language. I'd also draw the attention of all the members of the IBA that some parts of the country, even today, do not have adequate coverage of banks. And when I say banks, I'm not insisting on brick and mortar. I know that exercise is already over. You have arrived at a certain number of uh, areas where there are no brick and mortar branches, which you may want to provide, and you've taken a call on that. I'm not interfering in that. But if there is a way in which you can provide ATMs, or even better, where you can afford to have more business correspondence. And in that, I would think, I've, I've come across quite a number of business correspondents who are women who are doing brilliantly well. I would like a positive and affirmative bias here. The more business correspondents are women, the better for your business. Show your positive prejudice in this. Get more business correspondence, get more women business correspondence. And the regions which have not had enough coverage of banks and where it is possible to bring in digital technology, particularly the Northeast, I was glad to see, and I'm naming the bank, it's not to say others are not doing it, I was glad to see Axis. I was glad to see some public sector banks also making quite a few inroads in the uh, northeastern area. Northeast has a particular difficulty of um, access, physical access. So if you went by your usual five uh, kilometer radius touch point, or if you went by a certain population size for a branch, Northeast will not get one branch. Or the five kilometer touch uh, radius uh, test that you'll do, will also not be effective. So you may have to look at Northeast with a bit of a, you know, a special treatment because they need the banks there. It is all full of buzzing activity, economic activity. We need financial inclusion for that area as well. So largely in this meeting, with a little expectation from the banking area, I request that you look at strategies for the next 25 years. You look at digital approach 
immediately you look at systems which talk to one another also you also look at newer ways of providing portfolios for younger population don't miss out that the 25 years will be done only with your support the more old fashion we sit around not undermining the prudential norms prudential norms intact if you sit thinking the business will come to you no business will not come to you people are very good nowadays through their phones accessing the, that particular bank or that particular institution which is going to be accessible to you as you did earlier when i say earlier about 30 40 years ago when door to door campaigning for accounts you know i i do as a child i had few people in my house who were all in the banking area the kind of deposit mobilization some word like that was used you went door to door to do deposit mobilization now you don't need to do that if you are able to keep yourself available through all the digital phone app based uh, systems you are available for everybody so those kind of out of the box thinking which are in line with today's india's expectations are things which you need to plan keep your norms intact but think of ways in which you can reach out um, the role of uh, private sector banks is equally important i would want them to keep their dynamism up there are certain areas in which both the private and the public sector banks will have to look at and that is the insurance coverage under the government schemes jandam accounts are there but at the uh, bima yojana suraksha bima yojana we still need all of you all to participate maximum saturation has to be reached in all of them i know it is a public sector bank which largely carry forward the government's schemes and so on whether it is mudra but i know other private banks are also doing it but one last call that i like to put before the iba today and for the um, for those of you who are going to wear the thinking hat on behalf of your banks regional rural banks will have to have some attention given i think once earlier when we met i had voiced it rural banks need support for digitization they need digital technology they need to be upgraded in terms of the systems that they have they need a lot more assistance in terms of getting uh, all accounts into digital platforms account aggregators will also have to go to them so some more attention by the sponsoring banks for the regional rural banks would help there so much and more happening because of the agricultural Uh, infrastructure fund that government has created we need that to be better reached out through the rrbs so ensure that the rrbs get the support of the sponsor banks and uh, slowly work might even expand to strengthen the cooperatives but that's a bit later but for now i would want you to immediately attend to the rrbs as well so thank you for giving me this opportunity Once again, I appreciate the service done during pandemic. I also appreciate the efforts which are being put through uh, during post-pandemic revival-based efforts. But it's not all over yet. This year, particularly this year, during the festival, immediately after the festival, there will be a lot of interest. There is. indication that people are willing to spend money people are willing to travel people are wanting to go to different destinations businesses are wanting to invest additionally capacities to be expanded all these are being talked about if those will have to materialize it is through you you will have to keep yourself available and ready for ensuring that the requirements credit requirements are met and met in time without much of a stress on diligence and compliance you should facilitate the customer to ensure that he thinks so oh, this bank is fairly you know easy they are comfortable with me i am willing to do the whatever uh, compliances so it's all happening that energy of positivity should go out there was a time when 
you were very strong and uh, very powerful in stating the concerns that you had and that I remember in 2019, whether it is because of the stress the staff had in their minds, whether they are going to be pursued by the CBI, whether CBC is going to come after them, whether the decisions are going to be questioned by the CAG and so on. Those days are gone. You are on a better platform now. You are on a better position now. If that could be effectively communicated to the authorities, to the government, saying we are all scared, we are frozen, we don't want to take a decision, you are very effective in that, weren't you? Weren't you very effective in that? They have been addressed now. Equally now I want you to be effective in saying we are ready for good business. We are ready now to deal with customers. Please come. We want to serve you. Give us a call. We are willing to come and talk business with you. You be proactive. You are very effective when you want to convey a thought. I would want you to convey the thought to the customers that you are ready for them and you will meet them wherever they want and do business with them. Of course, you will be conscious of keeping your own norms intact. Nobody is going to undermine that. So, good wishes. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Next 25 years is in your hands. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your invaluable guidance, your encouraging words of appreciation, and for sparing your valuable time for the benefit of our distinguished audience. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now have the unveiling of the prestigious Coffee Table Book. This memorable document will take you down memory lane depicting the association's activities for the past 76 years. I request the Honorable Chief Guest to kindly unveil the Coffee Table Book. Chief Executive IBA to propose the vote of thanks. At the outset, I would like to thank our Honorable Finance Minister, Madam Nirmala Sitaramanji, for not only sparing her valuable time despite her busy schedule for our this AGM but also acknowledging and encouraging the bankers in the role and the contribution made by them during the pandemic and as well as into the post-pandemic area for revival of the economy. Thank you, Madam. Today, the Indian banking system, especially the public sector bank, got immensely benefited with the visioning leadership by providing them capital in time, supporting them in cleaning of their books, and now they are poised for growth because the internet banking system is now having adequate capital advocacy which can support your vision for next 25 years and can definitely uh, go uh, in hand in hand with the government uh, in taking the initiative for economic development so that the country can be the uh, number one economy of the world 25 years from now. We, members of IBA, are committed to live your vision and will uh, do our best that we uh, do not uh, stay short of any expectation uh, while performing our duties in meeting the aspirational growth and economic growth of our country in next 25 years. We assure you, Madam. I am equally thankful to our Minister of State for Finance, Sri Bhagavad Karaji, for sparing his valuable time and sharing his words of wisdom with all of us for 
keeping in pace with the economic development of the country. You are all aware the Secretary DFS, Sri Sanjay Malhotraji, is a driving force for the ease next. Yes, he said you all have a general program and then ease next is we need bank specific and uh, the, taking it taking to the next level. I am really thankful to him for providing us all the support and guidance from the government in all the matters including the recent matter of 194 AR where the government gave the support and withdrawn the uh, even the budgetary announcement for taxation of the OTS settlement. And we are getting the consistent guidance as a mentoring for the issues which are of national interest. Thank you, sir, for your presence and uh, sharing your words of wisdom. I must thank the regulator, RBI, the governor, RBI, Shri Shakti Das Ji, and the DGs and the team who have been a very helping hand and supportive in our initiatives for bringing various reforms into the existing system and uh, taking our advices and taking our consultation on board to meeting out the requirements of the industry. They have played a very positive and proactive role and uh, we must acknowledge that this is the best time when we have a very supportive government and a supportive regulator and this is the best time for us to grow and contribute our might into the growth of the economy. This program would not have been possible without the participation of member banks. I am thankful to each one of you for supporting the initiatives of the IBA in every walk of life, wherever may be staff during pandemic time, may be issues of national interest, may be issues of industry interest. Your unflint and support is a great motivator for the team at IBA and I must thank all my members for this support. I must thank the media present here. The media has been supporting the initiatives of the banking sector in a very positive and constructive way and giving us a due recognition in the system for the contribution made by the banking sector into the economy. Thank you for your presence and the support to us. Last but not the least, my team at IBA, they have made it happen that IBA is now in the forefront of taking major decisions, forefront of giving a consultative and a collaborative role and the collaboration among banking system is the best as of today. I thank them for their contribution in organizing the event today and my thanks to the entire management committee and the headed by our chairman, Mr. Atul Goyal, for providing us a facilitating platform to perform our duties. Thank you for all your, thank you all for your presence today. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, with this, our AGM function stands concluded. I thank all of you for your participation and cooperation in the smooth conduct of today's program. The EASY event for public sector banks will commence at the same place in about 15 to 20 minutes from now. In 10 minutes from now, there's a correction. We now request our Chief Executive to kindly escort our Chief Guest, Guest of Honor and Secretary DFS for high tea. Managing committee members are requested to proceed for high tea at the assembly hall. Towards my right, our team will be guiding you. Chief executives, MDs and CEOs of member banks and other dignitaries to join us at the Forum Capital Hall. Our team will guide you, please. Thank you once again and have a lovely evening all. <laughs>